The story of our inferiority is an old dodge. As I have said, for whoever men oppress their fellows, wherever they enslave them, they will endeavor to find the needed apology for such enslavement and oppression in the character of the people oppressed and enslaved. When we wanted, a few years ago, a slice of Mexico, it was hinted that the Mexicans were an inferior race, that the old Castilian blood had become so weak that it would scarcely run downhill, and that Mexico needed the long and strong and beneficent arm of the Anglo-Saxon care extended over it. We said that it was necessary to its salvation and a part of the manifest destiny of this republic to extend our arm over the dilapidated government. So too, when Russia wanted to take possession of a part of the Ottoman Empire, the Turks were an inferior race. So too, when England wants to set the heels of her power more firmly in the quivering heart of old Ireland, the Celtics are an inferior race. So too, the Negro, when he is to be robbed of any right which is justly his, is an inferior man. It is said that we are ignorant, I admit. But if we know enough to be hung, we know enough to vote. If the Negro knows enough to pay taxes to support the government, he knows enough to vote. Taxation and representation should go together. If he knows to shoulder a musket and fight for the flag, fight for the government, he knows enough to vote. If he knows as much when he is sober as an Irishman knows when drunk, he knows enough to vote on good American principles. Do you intend to sacrifice the very men who have come to rescue of your banner in the South and incur the lasting displeasure of their masters thereby? Do you intend to sacrifice them and reward your enemies? Do you mean to give your enemies the right to vote and take it away from your friends? Is that wise policy? Is that honorable? I mean, could American honor withstand such a blow? I do not believe you will do it. I think you will see to it that we have the right to vote. We look naturally to this platform for the assertion of all rights, and for this one especially. I understand the anti-slavery societies of this country to be based on two principles. First, the freedom of the blacks of this country, and second, the elevation of them. Let me not be misunderstood here. I'm not asking for sympathy at the hands of the abolitionists, sympathy at the hands of any. I think the American people are disposed often to be generous rather than just. What I ask for the Negro is not benevolence, not pity, not sympathy, but simply justice. The American people have always been anxious to know what shall they do. Everybody has asked a question and they learned to ask it early of their abolitionists. What shall we do with the Negro? I have had but one answer from the beginning. Do nothing with us. Your doing with us has already played the mischief with us. Do nothing with us. If the apples will not remain on the tree of their own strength, if they are worm-eaten at the core, if they are early ripe and disposed to fall, let them fall. I'm not for the tying or fastening them on the tree in any way, except by nature's plan. And they will not stay there, let them fall. If the Negro cannot stand on his own legs, let them fall also. All I ask, give him a chance to stand on his own legs. Let him alone. If you see him on his way to school, let him alone. Don't disturb him. If you see him going to the dinner table at the hotel, let him go. If you see him going to the ballot box, let him alone. Don't disturb him. If you see him going into a workshop, just let him alone. Your interference is doing him a positive injury. Let him fall if he cannot stand alone. If the Negro cannot live by the line of internal justice, the fault will not be yours. It will be his who made the Negro and established that line for his government. Let him live or die by that. 
if you will only untie his hands and give him a chance, I think he will live. 